Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate how to install an MSI package or a um, Microsoft install package using group policy object. So first thing we do is find an MSI package and most software that you find out on the internet has an MSI package. So we're gonna download an MSI package called 7-Zip. 7-Zip is an alternative to Windows 7 WinZip. Um, it has some additional features. Um, it's pretty much just like um, WinZip. So we're gonna do a search for 7-Zip MSI. And from the 7-Zip.org website, we can download the 32-bit or the 64-bit MSI package. Now my workstation, I'm gonna switch over to my workstation. My workstation is a 64-bit um, operating system, so I'm gonna need a 64-bit MSI package. So I'm gonna download this. Okay, we'll try the direct link because it's obviously not downloading. We're gonna save this file and I'm gonna save this. I created a folder on my data drive called software and GPO. In the group policy object, I currently already have Firefox 7.1 MSI package deployed through group policy objects. So you'll see references to that in all these configurations. So this one is 7-zip, I'm gonna name it 7-zip, 920-64 MSI package. I'm gonna save it there. And we're gonna open up that folder. So now that I have an MSI package, let's take a look at the requirements of the actual folder that I'm sharing. So if we go back to the data drive, we see we have a software folder. I'm gonna right click on that and click properties. In that software folder, if I go to sharing, this is actually shared from my server and is shared as the name software. If I go to advanced sharing, I go to permissions and see this is important. Authenticated users need read access because some of these packages that we're gonna be installing, we're gonna be doing as the computer, not as a user. Authenticated users includes computers because computers are actually authenticated users in Active Directory. So make sure you have these settings. I also allowed everyone to have full control through this share. Now these are just share permissions, not folder permissions. Let's take a look at folder permissions now. Folder permissions are done through the security tab. And I can see authenticated users can read and list folder contents. Domain users can read and list folder contents. Even though through the share, I gave them full control. That means that they can do any of these, the permissions that I have set here under security. So that is just allows them to have full control through the share, but then from there, the folder security settings take control. So again, the primary thing we need to make sure is because a computer is gonna be authenticated to the directory, it needs to have read access to this folder and the contents in it. So we're gonna close that down, open up, and I created a special folder for GPO because I could have other software I want listed in here that's not necessarily an MSI package. So I'm gonna open up the GPO folder properties and take a look at it. It is not being shared, but it is accessible through the network path, lanwan-srv1 dot or slash software slash GPO. And again, the security permissions were inherited. So you can see authenticated users have read list and uh, list folder contents to read and execute. And those are inherited. Okay, so in there you see the Firefox, which I mentioned before, and our 7-zip. That's the file that we are interested in. Okay, we'll close this folder. And you can see in my Active Directory, it's called landwind.prv. I created an OU, organizational unit, that has three different OUs inside of it. The computer's OU has all my computers and the computer we're gonna be messing around with today happens to be this one right here, Win7X64-1. And I have faculty and students as examples for different users that can log in, test.me and student.1. 
So we're going to be applying a group policy object to the computer's OU. So I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to open up group policy object management. And that's here because it's in a recently um, used program, or it's under administrator tools underneath group policy management. It opens up and shows the actual Firefox GPO that I've already created. Let's take a look at this so we can see the settings that have been set for this and then we will uh, take a look at the next one here that we need to also invoke for Windows 7 workstations. So we're going to right click on the Firefox one and notice it's applied before I hit edit to the computers OU inside the LAS OU. So it's going to be applied to any computers that are inside of this computers organizational unit. Um, in here the policies under software and software installation and you can see there's a Mozilla Firefox deployment state and I have identified and this is another important aspect the fully qualified domain name for this package not the E drive the data drive where I have this stored on the server but this is the path that all the workstations from the network will be able to access my Firefox MSI package so I'm going to create another one in here but I'm not going to use the same GPO. I'm going to use a different one so we can see the whole process. I'm going to exit out of that. And the next thing that needs to work for the Firefox installations is the group policy object and disable uh, universal access control. So I'm going to edit this one and take a look at this. Windows 7 pops up the little message that says, are you sure you want to allow this program to make changes to your system? Yes or no? And you have to always hit yes. So that same thing occurs when you are installing um, a piece of software on the computer remotely through GPO. So we can take a look at Windows security settings and local security options. And if we scroll down you can see the ones that I have enabled. So this one, the user account control behavior of elevation prompt for administrators in admin approval mode. If you define this policy, you have to select elevate without prompting. So that way it will actually elevate the authority to be able to make those changes without prompting. And then this one, detect application installations and in prompt for elevation. We want to disable that one, so you have to check define this policy and disable it. Next one you want to set is only elevate user interface access applications that are installed in secure locations. We want to disable that one. And this last one, run all administrators in admin approval mode. We want to define this and disable this as well. So those are the only changes we need to make. Again, you can see the path to those security options is underneath the computer configuration policies windows settings security settings local policies and then security options and in here you'll see those listed so you need to make those changes all right once we have those all set up now we're going to create another group policy object for my 7-zip so i'm going to right click on computers OU and create a group policy object in this domain and link it to this OU. I'm going to call this 7-zip and hit OK. I'm now going to right click on that and edit it. So the computer software installation through group policy is very easy. If you right click on software installation we're going to create a new package and it wants us to browse to the package. Now if we go up here in the address bar and take a look, it's using because I last used this location for my Firefox installation. But yours probably is defaulted to the actual drive letter where the share folder is. So instead of the drive letter E software GPO, this is the incorrect location. You want the actual network location. So you can click on network and here you're only going to see the other computers that are in your network. So this is where you need to actually type in the UNC full path. So my server name is lanwan-srv1 and I'm going to type in the fully qualified domain name. It's good practice to do so. lanwan.prv slash 
And then here it automatically shows a list of shares that are in there. And we remember it's software. Inside of software, it's GPO and then 7-zip. Again, you want to double check that you're using the fully qualified domain name and path. So I'm going to choose 7-zip, hit open, and we can have this as an assigned or an advanced. We're going to choose assigned. So now this package is assigned to be deployed to any workstation that doesn't already have it installed. And again, it's going to use the source, the fully qualified domain name and path to the MSI package. And that's it. Now let's take a look at the workstation and make sure that this actually gets applied. So on my workstation, I'm going to log in. As test.me, this is the student account. I'm going to type in my password correctly. And in here, you can either reboot the computer or you can type a command by going to the command prompt and you do that by selecting the start button and then CMD. You can type GP update slash force. So GP update space forward slash force. And it will go out and reread your new group policies that you have set and then prompt you to make a reboot of the computer because there's updates that have applied that need the computer to reboot. And one of those is actually installing software. So OK to restart, answer yes. And the computer will reboot in less than a minute. And upon reboot, the computer will have the new group policy object and we should see 7-zip installed. Before it reboots, we can quickly just double check that it is not installed and we'll see it here installed shortly. And just like any software package that gets installed, it takes a few minutes or seconds to install it using the MSI package. Imagine if you were to double click on the MSI package and install it or prompt you a few times to install it. What Windows does is uh, just select all the default settings for that MSI package to be installed in the default locations. So if we go out of full screen mode here, we can see <coughs> the hard disk is actually being written to. So I'm going to go back into full screen mode and I'm going to log in. Hopefully the installation should be completed. And it seems to be uh, held up here for a moment. Hopefully it's thinking about the install. Yeah, it's not letting me log in here yet. Okay, finally gave me a login prompt. i log in now. as the student account. So the student account does not have privileges to install software, but we can hopefully see here at 7-zip. There it is, it is installed. We open up that program now, and now we have it. So there's the 7-zip program folder, and you can see the two files that it installed. So 7-zip installed. Looks like it worked great. So that's how you deploy a package. One quick thing I want to show you as a troubleshooting tool while you're trying to get this to work is you can type the GP result to show you the group policy results slash R and if we scroll down a little bit we can see the group policies that are installed 
on this computer. Now, because I'm logged in as a student account and I don't have privileges to see the computer properties, I'm only seeing information about the user. But here it shows you, if I right click and mark, the applied group policy objects. And here's where you'd see listed. Right now I only have the login script because the user can only see the user group policies, not computer-based group policies. But this is where you would see the computer-based group policies if you were logged in as administrator of your domain on your workstation, because then you would have administrative privileges to this workstation. So great tool to use from the command line, GP result space slash R, and you can see which policies were applied or not. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something.